Welcome, your username. Thank you for purchasing a computer with Microsoft Windows Whistler. Yeah, right, like that ever actually happened. Today, we are taking a look at the official Beta 1 build of Microsoft Codename Whistler, otherwise known as Build 2296. Build 2296 was compiled on the 24th of October 2000 and was, again, the official Beta 1 build of Microsoft's own codename Whistler. And what's significant about this, other than the title, is, well, the setup screen, the out-of-box experience, as you can see right in front of us, and all that has been further refined to where it doesn't seem like it's half-broken. And it fixes a bunch of bugs from the prior build, which I took a look at on my channel, build 2267. But as per usual, there are a couple of different builds that I will not be taking a look at, or at least in this video, but they're worth documenting anyway because they are, well, significant in their own rights. There is build 2276. Now this build has quite a bit of preparation for beta one. In fact, there's actually quite a bit of stuff that I would have liked to have taken a look at inside of that build, but it has a bug with installation where you can't directly boot its installation media due to a BSOD error. And as of the making of this video, I don't have the time to prepare for that due to some other events. So for now, just assume that I can't install it and I use this build instead because technically you could. Even though technically I was running 2267 before and I could have just upgraded to 2276, but whatever, it doesn't really matter too much. In build 2276, there was an update to Windows Media Player. It got Media Player version 7 from Windows ME, and Internet Explorer also got updated to Internet Explorer 6 in quote marks because it was still technically Internet Explorer 5.6, but we all know how that is because of course. Windows Movie Maker was also ported over from Windows ME, so that version is included. The About Program banners, which we'll take a look at, have a more fluid appearance and also the login screensaver will show the SKU of the build that we have, which in this case will be the professional edition of Whistler. There is also some other updates, such as the start button being updated to resemble the old Windows 2000 design. There is also an improved help and support center in this build. The out-of-box experience also included a mouse tutorial inside of build 2276, which is pretty interesting. The personal start menu was also called the simple start menu rather than the uh, previous name of the personal start menu, of course. The username of the logged in user is also present on the start menu, which is a nice change. And there's some other various different changes inside of that build that are probably worth taking a look at in another video, but not today. Another build that we are not taking a look at, and probably for good reason because there's not really too much different between 2276 and this build 2296, which is 2287, and that is, well, the internet and email icons at the top of the start menu have been updated to resemble later uh, icons in different builds, but otherwise there's really not too much different. So, yes, I would love to take a look at build 2276. If not, I already have a video on it with a card in the top right-hand corner whenever that potentially comes into play. It might not be up there as of the making of this video, but if it ever is, well, then I made a video about it, so there you go, if it ever shows up in the future, from future me. So, hey, you're welcome. So, during the next few minutes, you'll be guided through a few steps to enable the internet and multimedia capabilities of this computer. Yeah, I'd love to experience that. Here's that mouse tutorial I was just talking about. So we can go ahead and take a look at this if we really wanted to, but I think we use the mouse. And besides, I think if you've already watched the Build 2276 video, I might have already went through this, so, not really worth it. No, I don't want to register necessarily, because why not? I do not want to configure an internet connection at this time, because I'll do that later. Congratulations, you are now ready to use Microsoft Windows Whistler. Here's a summary of your activity. You did not register your copy of Windows codename Whistler with Microsoft. Your computer is not configured for internet access. Whatever. Also, uh, the background looks really cool with this Whistler theme. If you ever... Uh, install Whistler and you get that little Whistler uh, sort of video before the out-of-box experience comes up. This is exactly the kind of background that it would be inside that video, just to the higher resolution. So as you can see, Windows Whistler Professional down there in the corner. So in that screensaver, we might just be able to actually see that. I did an upgrade from build 2267, by the way. 
So that's probably why uh, the computer name up there is still the same as what I set it to previously. Oh, that's also interesting. Uh, the, looks like the bug from 2267 must have carried over with rendering the wallpapers incorrectly. I wonder if that's still true, because if that's the case, then that's really irritating, because that is not in this build. But as you can see, there is the new start menu, and as you can also tell, it's got the internet and email shortcuts that were also mentioned, as well as having the username inside the side of the start menu. I just love the look of the start menu. It's so 2000, or really 2001 even, it just looks really retro. I don't know what it is about it. I just really love the look of it, especially these icons too. Like, look at that internet icon. That is just beautiful. So, let's see if that bug with active desktop is still in this build. It shouldn't be, but maybe it got transferred over when I did the upgrade, because if it did, oh, thank God it didn't. Okay. All right, cool. That bug is no longer there. So we can actually take a look at this beautiful Whistler professional wallpaper which actually I love the look of. It really does look nice. Uh, it, of course, it wasn't build 2267, but again, it had the active desktop bug, so we couldn't actually take a look at it more properly. As you can see, it has my video driver, which is why the out-of-box experience was able to work. And let's see if there's some other things that we can actually take a look at. So simple start menu, classic start menu. Still says Windows 2000 down there, I believe that's what that shows. So they haven't updated that picture yet, but they sure have this one. And as you can see, there's options for large icons or small icons. And uh, there you can actually see there's still the option to animate the menu as it opens, which was later removed in XP, which I wish they wouldn't have gotten rid of that. That's actually a really cool option. But uh, at the time, there was still just the check boxes for what you wanted to show on the right-hand column of the start menu. I believe in the final version of XP, you got fine grain control as to whether or not you wanted to expand the different options, like the My Music folder or the My Documents folder or stuff like that. But in this case, they're just on-off toggles to just show the items. But as you can see, this is still an option. You can still have it animate the start menu sliding up as it opens, which I really, again, I, I wish that XP kept that feature because that's actually kind of cool. But here you can see there's Windows Update making an appearance. And then there's Windows Movie Maker, which you can see is highlighted in yellow because I did an upgrade from build 2267. So the address book's new and the Movie Maker program is new from a, I believe it's build 2276 that I mentioned just a few minutes ago. Otherwise, basically everything is the same as you would expect in 2296. All the programs are gonna basically be the same. So let's go ahead and try Windows Movie Maker. Let's see how that works. Yep, that pretty much looks like Windows Movie Maker from Windows Millennium Edition. Gotta love that music. We'll exit the tour here. Let's take a look at those about banners from the prior build. Actually, this doesn't have that, that's right, because Movie Maker is its own separate entity. But let's say, for example, we want to go open up uh, Notepad, and we'll take a look at one of those About banners. So as you can see, it has been updated to show uh, Microsoft's codename Whistler banner, and it also has version 5.1, build 2296 beta 1. So this is the official beta 1 build of Whistler. And we'll take a look at some other things while we're on this video. So we'll take a look at my computer. So as you can see, here is the look of my computer. Uh, it still has the look from 2267 and prior builds. It's just that this color is a little bit lighter, but it still has the 2000 style icons and the previous style of the sidebar here, the task pane rather. And I believe it still looks the same as 2000 with the very plain looking items. So let's take a look at some other stuff too while we're at it just to you know make this video a little bit more complete let's take a look at the help and support and we'll see how that looks in this build so as you can see here is help and support and it mentions whistler 32-bit professional i believe if you had the personal version of this it would show personal right there and you can also get access to new things with this beta obviously if this stuff was still provided and you were connected to the internet so that's obviously not going to show up anymore but uh, you see copyright 2000 up here. 
And then another thing I suppose we'll take a look at is the screensaver, the logon screensaver specifically, because it's supposed to show whether you have professional or personal. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll take a look. Ah, it does actually show uh, professional inside this logon screensaver. So that's pretty neat. That's pretty nifty. Of course, in XP, in the final version, it had that famous Windows XP professional or home edition screenshot or server 2003 if you had that kind of fanciness the open gl screensavers are still here so for example 3d maze that should still work and indeed it does and again since this is the ati rage 128 pro it's really fast but you get the idea if you've ever seen the old open gl screensavers you've definitely seen them all there you can see the energy star has uh, been implemented into here because this system supports that functionality so does the monitor although it's just mainly a hot shortcut to the power options but still that is something that's nice well we can also take a look at windows media player 7 which as you can see just looks like ah copyright strike don't want to have to play that uh but yeah this is basically just the same windows media player 7 that was inside of Windows Millennium Edition. And this could be added to Windows 98 uh, in Windows, I believe NT4 got this update as well as 2000. So yeah, not surprised to see this here. Version 7.00.00.1956 from copyright 2000. And then I think there were some other things in here too, like I mentioned earlier with build 2276 having the Internet Explorer 6. So well, I guess we'll go uh, do this setup here real quick just so I can get out of the way. I don't want to set up Internet Mail. So obviously there's no Internet access. But as you can see, it basically looks just like Internet Explorer 6, only it has the 5.6 string there still. Oh, excuse me. But it's got beta 1 inside the version string. So it's probably a little bit more different than 5.6, but... Same idea applies. Of course, it still doesn't have the large buttons that XP's version of Internet Explorer 6 had, but that's to be expected because it still has the classic user interface. And one thing, again, you might have also noticed, this is your minor uh, detail. In build 2267, it had the stylized start button, whereas, as you can see down here, it has the Windows 2000 style start button with the older logo and text, whereas compared to the newer one, it looked a little bit fresher and more modern. So that's definitely different. Another thing too that's been minorly revamped is control panel. We can take a look at that and see the category view. As you can see, icons are updated to look a lot less old looking as you will. And now you can see we have different, much more proper looking icons. They're not finalized, of course, and the text is a little different. It doesn't look nearly as old-fashioned as it did previously, but some of the icons do still make more sense. And the categories, for the most part, again, are basically the exact same as they were in XP, other than the other control panel options, but they're basically the same categories now. So their corresponding icons look pretty nice. There is no right arrow boxes next to these hyperlinks to different tasks. As well, you can see the control panel icon area has been pushed down below. This is exactly how it was in XP, rather than being up on the sidebar on the left. Again, this takes you to add or remove programs, which does the same thing in XP. Uh, user accounts, just loads user accounts, which this also has a very similar layout to that of XP at this point, it's just the user icons are different. Then, again, printers and other hardware. Oh, you see here's another place where they haven't updated it yet. Uh, you can tell that it only shows the other control panel icons off to the side. Uh, so for example, you know, you got the mouse. This is basically how it was in XP, you had these control panel icons, but they didn't have any of the extra options yet like they did in XP, they had a couple different options and then they allowed you to pick control panel icons underneath, but they still have other options off to the left, which as you can tell from the performance and maintenance thing, they had it already updated and they no longer had those tasks or the other things on the sidebar on the left. Let's see what other things do this. Uh, this one basically almost looks the same. There's supposed to be a speech or a text to speech thing that was updated in this build. So let me see if that actually works. 
You have selected Microsoft Sam as the computer's default voice. So now we have the meme, the legendary Microsoft Sam. So, of course, you know what we gotta do. We gotta do the old classic uh, uh, raffle copter. Ah, it doesn't really work, does it? Nope. Uh, let's see here. Nope. Uh, it doesn't like uh, random text, does it? Nope. Oh, well, it does that, but it doesn't seem to have, like, the swath, swath, swath stuff that the later ones did. So you can still type a, you can still say normal sentence. A normal sentence. But that's about it, really. So we'll have to check back on that to see if we can still do the raffle copter, but that's cool to see that it actually works. Otherwise, that's about it for control panel, at least as far as what's probably interesting, I guess. But, I don't know, that's debatable as to whether or not, you know, it is, it is what it is anyways. So that's really all there is to say with regards to the official Beta 1 build of Windows Whistler, other than the readme notes on the desktop. But, you know, who really cares, because that's just something you would kind of sort of expect. It's got word wrapping, it talks about other things, uh, issues for Itanium-based versions of Windows, other bug reports and stuff like that you know who, who really cares for the sake of this video when we're all looking at the flashy new features and all that stuff and uh filing bug reports and all that stuff but otherwise about the only other thing that is noted with this build which is a bug and that is pinning apps to the start menu so for example if you pin windows movie maker oh interesting it's noted that you can't unpin things from the start menu. I wonder if they just mean removing it from the list. No, it can still you can still do that. Very interesting. So it was noted that you're not able to unpin items from the start menu. I wonder if they just mean this stuff. No, you can't because that's hard coded into the properties thing. Interesting. But you would not be able to unpin things that you would pin to the start menu is what they really meant, uh, which is kind of strange that that's the case, but it is what it is. So anyways. That is it for this build. If you liked what you saw, that button works. If you didn't like it so much, well, this other button exists as well to click. If you wanna see more content just like this one, if not more interesting content, there'll be a red button down below that says subscribe. You should probably click on it. That would help me out a bunch. And until the next video, guys, I appreciate you coming to watch and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.